let's now implement the second maximum of method. And now if you look at the description of this method here, we say we're given an array of integers, and then we have we may have duplicates in the array, and we got the assumption that uh, we can, uh, the array contains at least two elements. So in the case where there are only two elements in the array, so one will be the first maximum, the other one will be the second maximum, okay? And for this one, we got a constraint, which will also have the same constraint for the lab test. You are forbidden to use any library classes in the Java, like arrays or linked lists, etc. So the reason being, I really want you to really focus on the primitive array and only using loops and if statement to program the logic. That's a more important training for you. Okay, so now let's see how we can program this. I'm just gonna use a simple example to illustrate the idea and then you can also test the uh, utilities tester as well, okay? So now let's see this. How do we find out the second maximum? Let's say I A, the integer array, the input is now pointing to, let's say this particular array, for example, over here. Let's say only two elements. So that's a short, uh, that's the smallest input we can expect. Let's say we simply get three and four. So now in this case, we know that, uh, we know that this must be the first maximum and this must be the second maximum, right? Because you can see four is strictly, is larger than or equal to three. So that's very easy to decide. We can just use if statements, okay? So let's say, what about, we have another possibility. Let's say IA over here is pointing to an array of bigger size. Let's say more than two elements. For example, let's say that. So zero, one, let's say we got three and four. Let's say, uh, you know what? Let me just choose some, some different value. Let's say three and eight. How about that? And then uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Let's say we got over here nine, and then we have uh, seven, and then we have four. How about that? Okay, so now this is the idea. The idea is, first of all, we, on, we only look it because it's guaranteed the length of the array is larger than we could two. So we always look at the first elements of the array first. So we always look at the first elements of the array and then determine which one is the first maximum and which one is the second maximum using uh, some simple if statements. Now in this case, we will see that eight should be the first maximum and uh, three should be the second maximum. No problem about it. And then we're going to run a loop. And then we're going to run a loop to go over the remaining of the array and every time when we see element by element, we'll actually analyze where they should be. Maybe what, uh, maybe some of them should be updated as the first maximum, or maybe some of them should be updated as the second maximum. We'll do, keep doing up the updates until we reach the end of the array. I'll show you exactly how that works. Okay, let's say, let's say this is the first maximum, and this is the second maximum. Okay, let's say uh, that's the case. Okay, so now, question for you. So now we say that initially we got eight over here and also we got three over here. Okay, now over here we got nine. So now the first iteration, so the iteration is, gonna, is going to start from index two because we have already handled the first two indices. Start from index two. Nine, somehow you can see that nine is larger than the current first maximum. So what kind of update should we do? In that case, we know that because nine is strictly larger than, is or is larger than or equal to the current uh, first maximum. That means we must replace nine to be the new first maximum. At the same time, the old first maximum should now become the new second maximum, okay? You can think about we are using nine to push uh, eight down for one level and also we push three out of the uh, the context from the first and second maximum, okay? Hopefully you see that. So now, what about when we see uh, seven, what's gonna happen? So now when we see uh, seven over here, you can see if we see seven, seven simply uh, just over here, okay? So now is seven going to affect uh, any of the uh, maximum? No, it is not because a seven is less than or equal to the second maximum. So we just get nine and then we get eight, okay? And now what about four? Similarly, 
4 over here is now going to be also lower than the uh, current and second maximum. So it's not going to affect. So eventually, we get 9 and 8 being the first and second maximum. Okay, that's how we calculate. Okay, so now let's try, try to make things a little bit more interesting. How about that? Okay, so now I want to change the value a little bit. Okay, let me just change this guy over here. So let me just change this to, let's say, 14. And then I will do 12. How about that? Okay, I'll just change another example for you. Okay, so now let's just uh, erase this and then try that. Okay, so now let's say this. So now initially we determined that, uh, we determined that uh, eight is, eight is the uh, first maximum and three is the second maximum. Okay, now starting from the first iteration over here, so first of all, we see 14. So when we see 14, we know that 14 is strictly lar uh, it's larger than or equal to the first maximum. So we push eight down by one level and then put 14 over here. Okay, so that's after the second iteration. So now the first maximum is 14, the second maximum is eight. Okay, so what about the next iteration? So now we got 12. So where does 12 sit? 12 actually is below 14 over here, so we don't have to replace the first maximum. But 12 is larger than or equal to the current second maximum. That means we gotta push the current second maximum down and then replace that by 12, right? So that means we get 14 over here and then we put 12 over here. Okay, that's how we update. So this is the interesting bit because every time when you have a first, when you have a new element to be looking at, it's either because either it's larger than or equal to the first uh, maximum, or it's larger than uh, or equal to the second maximum. You're gonna do some corresponding updates. So finally, if you got four over here, okay, so four actually stays below twelve, so it's unaffected. So we got still got fourteen and twelve. Okay, that's kind of the idea. So you should really keep maintaining the first and second maximum. Okay, you can see logically speaking, it's very interesting how you can maintain. So uh, for this particular problem over here, I simply ask you to find out the uh, second maximum exercise for you. How do you find out the third maximum? Okay, think about it. So you may have to do that for your lab test. Okay, so now let me just go back here and then let's program that very quickly. So as exact, exactly as we said before, okay? So now, what I will do is, I will first of all, declaring maximum one for first maximum and maximum two for second maximum. And then I will just determine, because it's guaranteed the length is to be larger than or equal to two, I'll determine which one is which, okay? So now what I will do is, I would say integer uh, maximum one, maximum two. And then I would say if the first element is larger than or equal to the second elements, in that case, I would say maximum one is assigned to IA at position zero, and maximum two is IA at position one. Otherwise, do it the other way. Maximum one is IA at position one, and maximum two is IA at position uh, zero. Okay, that's the first two elements. So now what I should do is I want to start with the loop from uh, position two, and then to see where the current element is. It can be it can be either larger than or equal to the first maximum, or it can be larger than or equal to the second maximum. In which case we gotta do updates. Okay, let's see how we can do that. So now we can do a loop. We can say for integer i is assigned to two over here, not zero anymore, okay? i is less than, still the same uh, upper bound, i a dot length, and i plus plus. Okay, over here, so now I would do exactly what I said. I would say, if the current element, which is i a at position i, is larger than or equal to the current maximum one, in that case, I will try to replace, first of all, uh, max. Uh, what I will do is maximum one. I can say maximum two is going to be replaced by maximum one, and then maximum one is assigned to i a at position i. Okay, 
Now I have a question for you. Can I, would it work if I say the following alternatively? If I swap the order of these two, if I say maximum one is assigned to I A at position I, and then maximum two is assigned to maximum one, would this version work? The answer is no, because now when you say maximum one is assigned to I A at position I, so now when you say maximum two should be equal to the old maximum one, it's not the old version anymore, it's already the new version over here. So this order does not work. Okay, think about it more carefully. Okay. Okay, like that. Okay, maximum two and maximum one. Okay, similarly, now we also got another update condition. If we got else if, if I A at position I is larger than or equal to maximum two. Also, we know that implicitly, implicitly, if we can reach this part over here to check this condition, that means the previous uh, condition here is actually false, right? That means the negation of that is actually true. That means implicitly, the current element is strictly less than maximum one, which means we don't have to touch it, okay? So now we'll say maximum two is assigned to I A at position I. Okay, that's all we gotta do, okay? Now, the most tricky part is about why you gotta do this order only, because in that way, you do not overwrite the, uh, so the maximum you talk about over, maximum one you talk about over here is really the old maximum one, rather than the uh, new maximum one, okay? Be careful. Okay, okay, that's about it. And finally, we can say return maximum two, the second maximum. Okay, okay, that cor the code is correct. So now, if you just execute a utility tester, you will see that the output is okay. Okay, for example, we can just execute utilities tester and see what we get. Okay, let me go to utilities tester over here. For example, for example. Second maximum, let's just see one example over here. So second maximum of, so now let's say the first one is gonna be I, uh, I A six, and then the first second maximum is simply one, well, because they are simply uh, duplicate, so just five, okay? And also second maximum will also be five over here, that's correct, and also the second, second maximum over here will be first maximum 10, second maximum nine, okay? So nine is correct, okay? So this is correct. And what about when I have duplicates of the first maximum? So that means they are the first and second maximum at the same time, okay? So that's also correct over here. And finally, if I got 10, and then I have the second maximum here being duplicated, that's okay, because there's one of them being the uh, second maximum. So first maximum is 10, and the second maximum is still nine, which is over here. So the method is correct. Again, be careful with the logic over here. You can see that the way I try to show you the solution is by showing you how it works on the example first, conceptually, and how the uh, how the update should be uh, should be done before we actually talk about how the coding should be working. And now you can see in the coding, you also gotta be uh, careful with the order of assignments when you do the swap.